All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and rank up all the decks here. Pre-rotation. Basically, this is my thoughts. I'm not going to sit here ranking every single originals. This is, in general, my thoughts. Every single deck pre-rotation. Where does it sit right now? Um, and so we're just going to go for it here. Do not judge me. But as you can see, S, A, B, C, D. So S tier is basically no deck can really beat it. It's a very tough matchup, almost guaranteed wins. You need to figure out a way to go against it. So let's go for it. Uh, we'll start with, I guess, Reg Man, no. we're going to start with the Golden. Golden just won a tournament. It's very hard to go against. Insane amounts of damage. Just needs the energy to be in the hand. So a little bit more consistent than uh, Backscalibur, in my opinion. You just need to super energy retrieval. And basically, you just need the energy out of your deck. You don't have a Shivery Chill, unfortunately. But you do have a coin bonus to find those energies and toss them out. So in that deck, Earthen Vessel is huge. Um, but yeah, guys, the amount of damage you can push out with this deck is insane. The problem is this deck does rely heavy on Palkia and Goldingo and cannot save itself. So we saw that in the finals between uh, Seapow and Goldingo. Goldingo is actually Seapow's hitting for Seapow for weakness, but Goldingo still lost that match because Goldingo was forced to keep Palkia on board. Now, he didn't have to keep Goldengo on board, but he was forced to keep a Palkia on board to activate his Greninja anytime he wanted to. So that opened the game, uh, forced, uh, allowed uh, the Seapow player to have a turn where he doesn't have a two prizers on board, whereas the Goldengo almost always had a two prizer on board. And you can see that opened up space for the Seapow to take the game. Uh, but yeah, guys, besides that, Goldingo is very consistent, very good. 100% could be S tier. It is topping a lot of tournaments. But pre-rotation, in my opinion, Charizard answers this very well. Having uh, reliance on two prizers uh, on your, as your support is huge as well. And so we're going to leave this in A tier. Still very strong deck. Really can win a lot of tournaments. S and A tier, they do compete against each other a lot, but... Uh, uh, basically, S tier is a lot more consistent uh, in winning. So, uh, that's my opinion. A tier for sure. Moving on, C Pow. I think C Pow is S tier, 100%. C Pow just does so much stuff. C Pow, 100% S tier. Um, you can Radiant Greninja turn one. It's a deck that actually likes to go turn one, which a lot of decks don't like that. And uh, it's activated so easily. Uh, it activates itself with Shivery Chill into the Greninja. You are looking for a lot of items, but Irida helps with that. And uh, we've seen it win regionals before. In my opinion, this is the best deck in the format right now. Uh, you, There are ways to answer it. You do go for the Backscalibers, for example. Slow down the Seapow. But the problem is, if the Seapow player feels like his Excalibur is taking way too much down. What's up, Sombra? Yeah, you're going to love this information. If the Seapow player feels like he's really getting hit a lot onto his Backscalibur, guess what? All he does is add one more Backscalibur into the deck. Now it goes from two to three. And you can't lost City the Backscalibers. You can't really get rid of them anymore. And three rare candies is really all you need forever. So he's going to be able to consistently get into Backscalibur. And so there's going to be a way for you to answer the deck. But if the meta shifts into a way to be able to answer the deck with Lost City, for example. Backscalibur the Lost City once. And hope to God the second Backscalibur is prized. Then Sibao just runs three Backscalibers and he's completely answered that question. Like, he, there's no, that's it. He found the solution to that problem and now he cannot answer it anymore again. So that's why this deck is actually insane. It does so much work. It's one of the only decks that can consistently activate Greninja turn one, forcing the opponent if he doesn't find a man, if he basically loses game. Uh, really, really can see this deck uh, doing a lot. This is one of my favorite decks. This is the deck we played all day today and I can see its power. Now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it does rely on items a lot. It does rely on you understanding when you should, when you need the item and whatnot. Uh, but uh, once you play the deck a lot, uh, it does rely on items. It does rely on what you're drawing. But f if you figure out uh, how to stay consistent with your with getting value from Eridas instead of like just playing them for no value, getting insane value from the Eridas can really help you. 
and so the deck 100% S tier, in my opinion, S tier. Can be answered, but the problem is you can find solutions to the, your problems. You're going to find solutions to your backscalibur and getting uh, lost zoned. You can find solutions to not having more Greninjas. Uh, find another attacker. Um, I mean, this this is this deck is so good. We saw it shine versus the Goldengo. What happened was Goldengo was forced to keep two prizers on board. Sipao was could wait. He just waited one turn. Attack with the Greninja. The Greninja died. I think he was able to super ride the Greninja back or forced the opponent basically to get a one prizer on board and got him evened out even though he was f coming from behind he it was he was able to come back from behind because the deck doesn't rely on two prizers it relies on a backscalibur which is a one prizer it can keep your board really safe and it can re you can really slow down the game in my opinion one of the best decks in the in the format if you learn how to play it uh let's not sugarcoat everything too too much guys let's just jump right into it charizard honestly in my opinion it is the deck to beat this is the basically the uh, the template on S tier. <laughs> this is the This is the best S tier deck. Uh, every deck has to figure out a way to beat this deck. Uh, the nice thing about this deck is it could start the game with zero, one, two prizers. It can it it can, it it moves on to be forced to two prizers. But it, it, basically, you do lose against Roaring Moon. You do lose against Sipao, but you don't have to because you don't have to play your Rotom turn one. You don't have to play your Lumini on turn one. So you can be safe. They're going to get a KO, but they're not going to get the KO that gets them ahead. And then you can play from there. Uh, the problem is uh, Sipao now knows he can uh, just attack with Greninja, but that's not even enough. Uh, I think Greninja attacks because you can just go into a Radiant Charizard and start attacking with that too. It's a one prizer that does so much more damage than the Greninja. And you can get to that game state after a Collapse Stadium, for example. Where let's say they KO your Pidgeot, you collapse Stadium, your Luminion, and now you're in a game state where you only have one Prizers on board. You can literally fight with the Charizard. You could get to game states where you only have one Prizers on board. You do rely on Pidgeot, but sometimes you don't even play Pidgeot for the whole game, and you, you literally just look for a rare candy Ultra Ball, rare candy Ultra Ball. It opens up so many options for you. And so this deck is the template, in my opinion. Every deck needs to figure out a way to beat this deck. And this deck can just beat so much. It can beat the Sipao. Okay, maybe not early aggression, but just being able to consistently um, hit certain numbers. Like after Sipao KOs you, now you're KOing any Sipao with a Vitality Band. Uh, also with Maximum Belt, we can actually become an amazing turn one deck KOing that Sipao. Because Sipao really relies on having a Sipao on uh, the active to get that Shivery Chill. So being able to get that first early KO into a maximum belt is going to be insane. I'm telling you, this deck, right now we're talking about pre-rotation, but po post-rotation, this deck is going to be insane. But right now also, this deck is really good. I think Sipao has a good matchup against uh, Charizard, unfortunately. Uh, a little bit more consistent. Uh, but Charizard can, if Charizard's smart and relies on a little bit of luck, if he can go after the back Scalibers... And that's that's pretty much game. Uh, I mean, if if we lost City one backscalibur and forced the opponent to play with one backscalibur, once the super rods are done, that's game over for him. So there is ways to go against the Sipa, which is why the stars are still you know, like S tier. But to be honest, really strong matchup against it with the Sipa, uh, and so uh, it's gonna be. Uh, Iffy guys, Sipao does beat it, but I mean, how can I say anything? I did win my uh, league <laughs> cup. Charizard versus Sipao is what won me the game, the cup. So wh who am I to talk, man? Uh, we could still beat it. All right, next Gardevoir. Gardevoir eight tier. It's gonna be gone here soon. This deck is gone. Basically, uh, no more level balls. Uh, none of the shiny Arcanas. Uh, you're gonna feel it. Uh, the deck is gone basically. But for now, it's gonna be eight tier. It is trying to win tournaments. It's very close to winning tournaments. It's won a couple of regionals, uh, but it's getting there. A lot of top 16s. It's a really consistent deck, really hard to play against. Uh, but it's, uh, in my opinion, uh, it just relies so much on drawing. It relies on uh, such a high level of skill and uh, honestly luck as well to be able to get everything correctly. And so we're just going to keep this in A tier. Same as Goldengo, lots of drawing, lots of uh, access to do a lot of plays, but still against these top decks, these top decks just beat it so hardly. Like 
I don't even think you run Manaphy in a Gardevoir deck and uh, Sipao just eats that deck alive with the Greninjas. So that's my uh, rationale there. Uh, we have a Tina, Lost Tina here. Lost Tina, we're going to put it in my opinion S tier. It is one of the template of the decks to beat as well. Um, has a really strong matchup versus Charge. Uh, basically a, a consistent matchup. With Path to the Peak, it's definitely going to be S tier. It's one of the only decks that relies on Path to the Peak really well. Uh, definitely S tier. Um, yeah, guys, I mean, there's not much to say. The, this is insane, getting to 7. Uh, turbo 7, uh, go to the Mirage Gate, and you open up so many plays. Uh, also, there's other iterations. I guess I don't have them here, but uh, even the Dragonite lost... Uh, vac lost uh, Lost zone decks are doing amazing, so this deck is insane, guys. Just getting to seven with Confe is so simple. Colors as well, it's in easy. Entei, Entei is really strong, guys. A lot of decks don't know how to play against it, but in my opinion, honestly, it just doesn't do enough. It's fun, it jumps around, uh, uh, but honestly, after you do all your shenanigans, uh, as long as I have my big attacker there, uh, you're gonna lose a two two uh, a two prizer, then you lose another two prizer, then you lose another two prizer, and what are you doing? You're running around trying to KO. I, mean, I guess if you hit a loop, Medichamp loop, that's pretty much uh, the best way to win. But if you never, it's so hard to hit them. Other a lot of decks will never give that to you, the ability to do that. Of course, against Gardevoir, I think you have a good matchup because you they just leave so many small things on the board, and they also give so much power. Uh, they take so much energy out of their own Pokemon, but uh, honestly, Entei, I don't think it can beat these top decks, in my opinion. Not consistently, not every single time. They could get lucky, get a couple of KOs against unexperienced players, uh, but honestly, it might be one of the only decks in B tier uh, for me uh, right now. Meridon next to it, B tier, just cannot compete, guys. Um, it can't. It, needs, it's, it relies heavy on the electrical generators. You don't hit your electrical generators, you're pretty much screwed. You literally cannot play the game. Flaffy's just not fast enough. And so... But it, it, if you run, for example, a Path to the Peak build, I think you raise up a little bit, but just the regular Meridon, it's literally not a problem for any of these decks. None of these decks have a problem with the Meridon, in my opinion. Maybe Gardevoir has a problem against the Meridon, but that's just because Meridon is so consistent. Pulling out a lot of damage, but that's about it. Every other deck can do so much damage against the Meridon. It's so easy. Uh, Garchomp, uh, C tier. <laughs> so we'll put him B tier. Um, it's just not enough. It's just so slow. And uh, he is big at 320 or what, whatever HP he is. It's just not enough in my opinion. Um, maybe when you get more support, more fighting Pokemon that can do a lot more uh we can do something but even if you like uh, attach into your karedon that's not enough it's just not not it's just this deck doesn't do enough i don't know what the hell this deck is we'll call it a stall deck stall i, I don't know what this deck is we're not gonna, gonna even rate it um lugia c tier right now everything counters lugia v union is actually cool not a lot of decks know how to play against it. It's basically a Gardevoir deck. So we'll keep it at the same level as the Gardevoir. Cybertails, thanks for giving Tinkatong some love. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, this Mew guy. Uh, it's okay. It's just not good enough. It's not good. I'm not going to even give it uh, anything. Roaring Moon. It is the deck to beat. It is becoming the template. Cyber, Cyber Tales. It is becoming the template of the S tier deck. It's so consistent. Pushing out number 220 damage turn one. It's so easily consistently doing that. Now it does have one drawback. You only keep two prizers on board. And if the opponent can kill two prizers with one prizers, like a Gardevoir, for example, that's game over. But uh, you could still boss every turn. You could still cross switcher. You could Pokemon catcher. You can get the KOs that you want as Roaring Moon. There's so many ways for you to get there. Uh, for sure, S tier, 100% Roaring Moon, S tier. We saw it in Europe. It was insane. So many players played Roaring Moon. Soon enough, it's going to win a tournament. I think what's happening is it just has bad matchups. 
I think what it is is the top top tier players just figured out how to play against it. They just never pl keep a two prizer on board against it. They just figured out the 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 line to go against it, which is why it beats everybody. Then it gets a top cut and then it starts losing. Um, because a lot of decks just are not ready for that amount of damage output so early. Uh, uh Comfe, I guess this is a Lost Zone box. Uh, this is the Lost Zone Dragonite. Uh, in my opinion, S tier. It did win almost. It did win the regionals. Aiden Kuss, uh, just a little bit misplays. Uh, cost them regionals, but really, it's just I mean, the deck just does so much. He does play Pokestops though, so he could help other decks out. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's just, this guy just has so access to so many Pokemon, Pidgeot, Charizard, Dragonite, he just can do so much, oh, I don't know if you run Charizard, actually, you run the Greninja, but still, you just have so many, there's different ways to play this, like, you can play with the Greninja, you can play with the Charizard, it's, it's, it's fun, it does so much, not a lot of people are expecting it, Mirage Gate is broken, so, yeah, S tier for sure. Uh, Riga guess it's it's fun. Not a lot of players play Collapse Stadium. If you don't play Collapse Stadium, you literally insta lose to this. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. You literally insta lose to this. Lost City, Lost Team is cracked, but it's only cracked because of the path to the peak. Like if he gives you, if he doesn't have, like let's say even if you rock Santa's every game, it's really not a big deal. It's the path to the peak is the problem. Um, but yeah, uh, Reggae Guess, honestly, if you do not collapse, you literally lose games sometimes. So, uh, like, so I'll put this A tier. I'll actually put this A tier. It actually has a really strong matchup against a lot of these decks. Uh, so, and you really rely on Collapse Stadium to beat it. It just does so much damage. I don't know where Fusion Mew is. That's crazy that Fusion Mew is not on this list. Fusion Mew is top, top, top S tier, 100%. Tinkaton, man, man, this, I'm gonna make Tinkaton represent stall decks, okay, so it's basically every stall deck, I'm not gonna put every single stall deck, like, basically we're gonna do this as Snorlax, everything, Mimikyu, whatever, right, um, yeah, it's rotating out, it's cyber tail. exactly, so Tina's not gonna be a problem, I'm telling you, but right now it is a problem, it's a big, big problem, it's, it is the standard, it's literally the template of S tier, um, so, Tinkaton, Basically, this is represents all stall decks. This is my opinion on all, all stall decks. Honestly, uh, all stall decks are basically A tier, S A tier, low A tier. All stall decks. Um, they do have certain strong matchup against other S tier decks, but mostly S tier decks beat them because they just run so much switch. It's kind of not fair for me to put Tinkatonk up uh, above uh, Entei, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, I think Entei obviously can just take this deck down so easily, but uh, just basically in a tier setting, uh, sitting by itself, stall decks is just so strong, literally beating Charizard, literally Charizard cannot beat a single stall deck, uh, nothing, no, nothing, no, not bird control, cannot beat the Tinkatonk, nothing, so... I'll put it up in A tier. Just Lost Cena, these comfies, these are on so much switches that actually do not feel bad from the Tinkaton. Uh, also, you can say, like, for example, Gardevoir cannot get locked out. So there's some ways. Uh, Shivery Chill, like, uh, Sipa is not going to get locked out. I mean, unless you're Snorlaxing. He cannot retreat, but basically he can attack with anything on his board usually all the time. Uh, and he, he also runs Iron Hands, so he can even get ahead quicker. But yeah, guys, uh, in general, Tinkaton, I think all stall decks are A tier. It's just, I'm, I'm, sad. I'm actually really scared to say that because I don't like this. I don't like that stall decks are getting better because in my opinion, which is, cr I'm, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. So this is what happened. Early Pokemon, competitive Pokemon, had a problem with discarding a lot of trainers and discarding people's hands and controlling people's hands and not letting them play the game. And I feel like this is the same thing, where you're just not letting uh, your opponent play the game. And I guess it's the abilities of Pokemon, not, or not uh, trainers, that are making you lose the game. So it's a little bit more balanced. You could just try to get rid of the Pokemon, but still, I mean, there's it's just I can't believe how how hard, for example, 
a Snorlax tall deck wins against Charizard, like you literally cannot win a single ever, ever, literally 0% chance of winning. And it's only because we don't run switches. So I don't like that. I don't like that you literally lose game just because you can't run three switches in your deck. And I don't think it's going to make it a healthy game environment. So hopefully they get rid of the stall deck meta. I really don't like the stall deck meta. I want more exciting games. I want more strategy, smart uh, planning. I want uh, I want to see stuff like we saw in the European finals, the, the Dortmund originals, where it was literally Sipa was about to lose game. And he if he, if he did not outplay the opponent, sacrifice his own backscalibur, and then find a way to bring back another backscalibur next turn, uh, he would have lost the game because he would have uh, gave the opponent too much uh, ahead of him. But what he was able to do was he was able to uh, get even. And then because he was able to sh kill a two, two prizer next turn and the opponent was only able to deal with one prizer, he was able to win the game. I like that. I, that's what I love. I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> you know, <how? laughs> pass, draw, pass, draw, pass. The, but, uh, oh, you don't have any basic Pokemon that are not EXs that cannot KO my MMQ? Uh, GG. I, I can't believe that that's pot real in this game. I really hate that that's real. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, guys, this is my tier list. Uh, interested in your opinions. What do you think about it? Uh, am I wrong in anything? Did I do anything wrong? Did I get anything wrong? I don't think so. Did I? I think I, I got something.